Hermit is glitching, dude. He's glitching hard. Excellent. All right. All right, so this is my desktop right here. And this is what we use, voice meter banana. This takes over your sound card. It takes over your sound card. Uh, it changes the, it's the driver. It becomes the driver for your sound card. And there's a basic, more basic version of this that's just called voice meter. And this, again, this is free software. So if you're, <clears throat> there's all kinds of applications for this. It, it's, it's extensive. It is quite extensive. You can do MIDI mapping here to actually map out, you know, different commands and controls here, <clears throat> um, you know, through the software for compression and gates and all that stuff. Um, and then it comes with this macro thing here, right? And you can, you can extend this window as much as you need. So whenever you're ready to, you know, jump in there and, and figure it out. All you got to do is grab this software, get it set up and installed. It's, it, it's a, again, a bit of a pain in the ass to set up because you need to point, you need to point, um, whenever I talk here, this voice detect, it cancels anything I'm doing. So, but anyway, these audio inputs, you need to point them to, you know, your, your sound card and then maybe another headphone port. That's kind of what I have set up here. And then you get all these extra inputs and outputs. But anyway, it's kind of a nightmare because if you look at my sound here, you can see here voice meter aux input, voice meter aux input virtual cable, uh, voice meter input, VB audio. It's just kind of, you know, you gotta, you gotta be prepared to be hella confused and it just takes some fiddling. But if you start with the basic voice meter and just get, get used to that, and then you realize like, oh, you need some more functionality then yeah, you, you upgrade to voice meter, uh, banana. And then there's even voice meter potato. I can't even use voice meter potato on my other screen over here because it's, it's so huge. Like I can't use it on my second monitor. My second monitor is, doesn't have the right resolution. So it just takes up the whole thing. I can't function. Um, but, uh, let's see. So once you have, say you get this far, Hey, for, first of all, you know, kudos to you. Um, Gold star for you. You did it. You set up voice meter. Much congrats. You know, let me know how, how hard it was, how difficult you were doing with it. Uh, because man, it, it, it really almost killed me years ago from just confusion and pain. But anyway, once you get that set up, you find this macro, you can just hit windows key or whatever your search functionality on a Mac macro buttons. Actually, I don't know if this is compatible with Mac. I would hope, I would hope it's compatible, but you pull this macro thing up. You jump in here, you right click, you name it whatever you want. I call it voice detect. And then you got to put this uh, command in here, system.keypress, and then alt, you, you know, whatever hotkey commands. So these are my hotkey commands, alt control N and alt control M. So whenever it's on, it's hitting this, this control N thing. Whenever it's off, it's putting M. So that's what I did. Now what you do is you go into OBS, you go into OBS here and you pull up this guy, you go to hotkeys, you set up a scene, frog talk, you set up a scene. So where there's just, uh, your get so at this point you need to have the art, right? You need to have the, 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 the moving animation, which right now, because OBS doesn't like hotkeys while OBS is active, it's just doing what it wants. But you have to have the moving animation. I called that one Frog Talk. And then I have the static animation, which is right there. So you make each of those an image on their own in a scene. And it's an, its own scene. And then you go into hotkeys. You, uh, you find the scene. And then you name show and hide. So when you show the talking frog, you hide the no talking, so in and in, right? So when it's on one, it's on the other one. And when it's uh, not talking, it's hiding, but it's showing the, the static frog. So that's kind of the quick and dirty rundown of how this here frog operates. I still need to update his, uh, his look and uh, tighten up his animation a little more. He's a little, he's a little greasy, staticky right now, ugly looking frog. But yeah, that's that's what that is. 
this is a great, great program. I use it for my soundboard as well. All you need is this little command, recorder.load equals, and then the file path. And then it, uh... I don't really use most of these, but when it's time to be, you know, on the Abolition Ocean... Oh, no. How did that get there? Mirror. Ooh, that was a mirror. That was close. And it's time for you guys to come on over and be in the abolitionist ocean when I got that sound. Either way, that was that. I did the drawing. The drawing's still not quite done, so I'll jump back over there. Excellent, man. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll be in the Discord there. I'll go ahead and jump in there now. Okay, uh... Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Ha. Shut that sound off. I probably need to make like a silent, like a silent key, uh, key that doesn't have a sound on it. But whenever you play a sound, you can cancel it by playing another sound. And sometimes I use the frog to cancel out a sound. But yeah, that's it. That's the that's the basic rundown of that. 